I am embarrassed to admit that I thought the longer you left chicken in a pan and let it cook, that the juicier and more tender it would become. I was totally wrong and have since discovered the right way to cook tender, juicy chicken breasts with a seared golden crust. I'm showing how you can easily enjoy juicy, pan-seared chicken too. This has become my quick go-to method for adding healthy, flavorful chicken to my pastas, salads, soups, and vegetables. We're gonna start with two boneless, skinless, thawed chicken breasts. And as you can see, they're thicker towards one end and thinner towards the other. So the key to getting a juicy piece of chicken is having it cook evenly throughout the entire piece. So what we need to do is flatten out this chicken so that it is all the same thickness. So my favorite hack for doing this is to start with just a simple plastic storage bag. And then I stick my hand inside, grab my piece of chicken, and then quickly flip my bag inside out so that I have my chicken inside the bag without having to wash my hands. Next, I'm going to straighten out my bag and place the piece of chicken in the center. You can use a fancy meat tenderizer to flatten the chicken, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use my rolling pin. So I'm simply going to start whacking the chicken in the thicker areas to help spread them out. Hashtag satisfying. <laughs> And I love using the plastic bag because it then holds all the chicken and the juice inside. And then it's very easy to see the chicken and to know when it is flat and even throughout. Now that my chicken breasts are an even thickness throughout, I wanna go ahead and remove them from the bag. So I'm just gonna take some tongs, grab the piece of chicken, and then keeping the bag flat, I can just place it right on top. As you know, chicken breast has very little fat or flavor, so we're gonna need to season them. So we're gonna start with just some coarse sea salt and simply sprinkle the salt over the top of the chicken. And I know it looks like it's going to be very salty, but I promise it's not gonna taste as salty as it might look. The salt is just gonna add a really great flavor. And then we're going to sprinkle some pepper on top of both. Now, if you already have a favorite seasoning mix, now is the perfect time to use it. I'm gonna use my favorite trio of seasonings, which is paprika, garlic powder, and onion powder. So I'm gonna simply take my container and just shake some paprika over the chicken. In terms of measurements, that's probably about half a teaspoon. And then I'll do the same with my garlic powder as well as my onion powder. Now, before we flip these over, we wanna go through and just kind of pat them down with our hand to make sure all those seasonings stick. And then we can turn our chicken over. And then repeat the same steps on this side. Now what makes pan seared chicken so delicious is having that really charred crust on the outside, but then soft juicy chicken on the inside. So to get that crust, a cast iron pan is going to give you the best result. Now you could also use a nonstick fry pan, but you won't get quite the same result. Now we're gonna to want to have this pan nice and hot so that as soon as we lay down the chicken, it's gonna start cooking that beautiful crust. I've turned my heat to high, and as soon as that pan is nice and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in about two tablespoons of some light olive oil. And then I want to tilt my pan to help spread the oil. And as soon as that oil starts to look nice and glossy, we are ready to put in our chicken. So we'll lay in our first piece. You can hear that sizzle already. Lay in our second piece. You always want to lay away so you don't have any oil splattering on you. Now, typically we might wanna go in and start moving the chicken around or kind of poking it, but we want to just let it sit. That sizzling sound means that our golden crust is starting to form. Now to help add some fat and flavor, you can go ahead and drop in a couple pats of butter. And don't worry, all of this butter won't end up in the chicken. It's just gonna really help to flavor it and add it even more juice. Then we can tilt our pan to get to some of that butter and we can drizzle that on top of the chicken. Just to make it even more juicy. And to add even more flavor, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle on some Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Hope I said that right. So I'm just going to pour on, oh, probably about two teaspoons onto each piece. And this is just gonna add even more flavor that's gonna cook into the chicken. Now we just be patient and let it keep cooking for probably about four to five minutes. Okay, that's been cooking for about four minutes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little peek underneath. Ooh, that looks amazing. Now we'll go ahead and flip it over. 
Look at that gorgeous color that we have on the underneath side. That looks amazing. Um, go ahead and add some more butter. And of course you could use a dairy-free butter if you prefer. I'm going to pour about another teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce on top of each piece. And I'll take my spoon and grab some of that butter and pour it over the top just to make these super flavorful and juicy. So the key to having juicy chicken is not overcooking it. And the only way to know when it's done is by using a thermometer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just poke a thermometer down into my chicken to see how our temperature is doing. So we're at about 120 degrees. This one is at about 148 degrees. So as soon as they reach 165 degrees, then we know that they're done. So this one actually is done on one end, but oh, done on that end, 165. All right, this guy's just about done. 165 there, and there we go. So now we can go ahead and remove this piece, and we're gonna put it right onto a plate. Now let's go ahead and check our other piece here. Let's see, we're at, oh, we're still kind of in the high 140s. This one didn't cook quite as quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the center of the pan just to help it cook up a little quicker. So we'll give this about another 30 seconds or so. Give it another check. So we're at, ooh, there we go. We're at 170 there. We're up to the 160 at least there. Nice, okay, this piece of chicken is done. Now I've transferred the chicken to a plate and I don't wanna miss out on any of this juicy butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this over the top. And the last critical step to having juicy, flavorful chicken is letting it rest before you serve it. If you were to cut into it now, all those juices would just come running out. But by letting it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, it allows the meat to really soak up and lock in all of that yummy juice. So we're gonna be very patient and just let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. Well, I've allowed the chicken to rest for about 15 minutes and I wish you could smell my kitchen right now. The aroma is amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer the chicken to a cutting board. This is always so exciting. I'll go ahead and slice into it here. Oh my goodness, see all those juices just running out of that tender chicken. And it slices so easily. So we just have that beautiful crust on the outside, but then that juicy, tender chicken on the inside. Now for the best part. Mm. The old maid would never believe that she could cook chicken that tastes that good. <laughs> I know it looked like we were adding a ton of salt in the beginning, but most of it cooked off and just left this really wonderful savory flavor. And then I taste that crispiness on the outside and then just that soft, tender chicken on the inside with all of its juices. That is amazing and we no longer have any excuse for cooking dry, flavorless chicken. And sometimes I'll cook four to six chicken breasts at a time and then just keep them in my fridge. And then we'll use them throughout the week for burritos or pasta or steamed vegetables or anything else we can dream up for some delicious chicken. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today in my kitchen as we cook this very juicy chicken. And if you'd like to see the full recipe card for this video, please visit my website, which is gentletummy.com. And I also invite you to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you know someone else who may be cooking overly dried chicken, maybe you could subtly share this recipe with them so they can have juicy chicken too. And I cannot wait to have you again with me in my kitchen next time.